This is the most simple but overlooked concept within your trading. It is the concept that will determine whether a trade idea is high probability or low probability and that is the concept of institutional sponsorship or as many of you would like to call it displacement. So even if you have an idea of what displacement is or you know what displacement is, I highly suggest you to keep watching this video because not only will it solidify your understanding but it will also expand your knowledge. So what is displacement or institutional sponsorship? You should be able to see institutional sponsorship very clearly on your chart. It should be extremely obvious to you. For example here, these three candles, that is where you have your institutional sponsorship as well as here, right? Look at these candles, these down candles, they are your institutional sponsorship. It's very obvious and easy to spot on the charts. What it shows, what displacement shows, is aggressive buyers or sellers stepping into the market, significantly increasing the volume with their orders to bring the markets higher. And what displacement tells you is that at that key level, it is either a valid key level to play from because that is where the majority of aggressive buyers are stepping in to aggressively take price higher away from that key level. They don't want to come back to this key level because price has already mitigated that key level. So that is how you could validate a key level. Not only that, but displacement also invalidates key levels. For example here, you have this premium array and price displaces heavily past that premium array. If you want to use the premium arrays below it here, you have this bearish order block. Imagine what it done, right? When this bearish order block was created, price displaces heavily past our bearish order block. So that significantly invalidates this premium array. And that's where you have your change in state of delivery. So to summarize, displacement is where aggressive buyers or sellers are stepping into the markets to take price aggressively in one direction. Based on the direction it goes in and based on the key level that it taps into, that is where you have your invalidation and validation of key levels. So the key thing with displacement or institutional sponsorship is that you always want to see it go in your intended direction because that will validate your entry ideas and your overall trade ideas. For example, let's say you have a bullish market structure break or a market structure shift. Yeah, you have this high. When price breaks through this high, you want to see heavy displacement to indicate that aggressive buyers are stepping in and taking price higher to show you that the markets intend to go higher, right? If it doesn't have displacement, it becomes very low probability because it doesn't show a large influx of aggressive buyers coming into the markets. So this market structure shift becomes very low probability and the discount rate that it happened off of is unlikely going to be a key level to support price higher because every time you see price mitigate a key level, you want to see displacement away from it to signify that this key level was truly your key level for large institutions and aggressive buyers or sellers to take price either lower or higher. And like I said, the science for doing so is where you have your displacement. So it's an extremely simple concept, but the theory behind it is extremely powerful. Hence why this concept shouldn't be overlooked. So let's start with the weekly time frame and look for your displacement. Look at what you have here. This market structure break, heavy displacement lower. What does price tap into before giving you that heavy displacement lower? This bearish order block. With that bearish order block mitigated, that, that shows you that this bearish order block was a key level for price to continue lower. And then it comes back into this imbalance and again gives you an aggressive move lower, taking out this low. When price retraced from here, look at what you have here. You have this high. Price breaks through that high. Now, if you overlook the displacement, you would think this was a valid market structure shift. But look at what it does. Goes higher. All it does was mitigate this imbalance before continuation lower and you can anticipate for that to just be a retracement before continuing lower because look at what you have here when it broke out this high you did not have any displacement whatsoever these candles were extremely small and weren't as aggressive as these down candles look how large these down candles are compared to these up candles ideally when you have displacement it should always leave behind imbalances because imbalances show you a disparity between buyers and sellers or sellers and buyers so that shows you aggression from one side of the party and that is where you have your displacement. So here, this market structure shift had no displacement or any imbalances left behind. And because of that, that was simply just a retracement to come into this key level before displacing lower. What does it leave behind? This large volume imbalance. And that is exactly what you want to see. You want to see imbalances. Price breaks this low with displacement and then it retraces back into that volume imbalance before displacement lower. 
Look at all these retracements in comparison to the true move. They are extremely small. And the whole thing repeats. It's not until here, where you get that heavy bullish displacement, taking out this high was where the price reversed. Is that a coincidence? No, it is not. Because this displacement shows you aggressive buys are coming into play. And this is where you're likely going to get your market reversal as we had displacement. So this market structure break, when this high gets taken out, becomes very high probability. If you come back to this example, compare this bullish market structure break to this bullish market structure break. Why do you think this one held in comparison to this one? Because this one, you had clear displacement. Look at the amount of up candles you had, the sizes of them, and the imbalances that are left behind. Price comes back, respects the imbalances before displacing higher and taking out old highs again. So, with that in mind, where do you think your highest probability trades come into play? When price is in line with your high time frame direction and it is backed up with displacement off of key levels. So, when the higher time frame is in a bearish direction, you want to see premium rates be respected. So when price comes back into those premium rates, what do you want to see? You want to see heavy bearish displacement to show aggressive sellers coming into play, validating your key premium array level and taking price lower. And like always, as price is fractal, displacement works on the high time frame all the way down to the lower time frame. So let's start with your top down analysis. Yeah, what do you have on the higher time frame being your daily? This bearish order block. Price comes back into that bearish order block and look what it gives you. It gives you heavy displacement. Take out this low. Price comes back, rebalances this imbalance before continuing lower. So that heavy displacement left behind an imbalance. That shows you aggressive sellers are overwhelming aggressive buyers. So that is where you have your displacement. This is also backed up by your second displacement to take out this second low. So it's very clear that on the high time frame, being your daily time frame, we are in a bearish direction because displacement is heavily favoring your shorts. So if I pay price up, look what it leaves behind. This imbalance here, which gets validated after this third up candle was generated. So what would I look for here? This is where I could look for premium raise for price to come back into. Either this bearish order block or this imbalances that was marked there. This is where I would draw down onto a lower time frame. My middle time frame being the hourly, let's play price out. It taps into your higher time frame premium rate. And from here, what would validate this higher time frame key level as opposed to this bearish order block? or vice versa, what we validate this bearish order block in comparison to this imbalance is displacement. So from here, you would look for market structure breaks or market structure shifts to the downside. And what would validate those market structure shifts or market structure breaks, i.e. make them high probability, is displacement. Same thing you saw on a daily, you want to see on the hourly now. And that is exactly what you get there. So here, you have your market structure break. This is where you have your displacement. When you have this displacement, like I said, it validates this entire higher time frame imbalance key level. From here, what would you look for? The same thing you looked for on the daily time frame, you look for the hourly. You have this premium rate that price could come back into, or premium raise above here. Paying price up, it taps into our premium rate. This is where I would draw down onto my execution time frame. Here, literally the same thing. Price is fractal. So what does it do? It takes out this liquidity as a sweep. You have this old low. Price displaces heavily past that old low, giving you a market structure break. Look how it leaves behind. Imbalances are left behind. This is where you could look to have your entries. At this breaker block, your entry there, stop loss above this high, and then your take profit could be below this low. A very solid trade, 2.4R. Playing price up, taps you in. Right, it took some time, but eventually it does so. And this is where you shouldn't be afraid of price hovering around your entry. You should be confident in your trade because this trade was in line with your higher time frame direction. You had displacement confirming your higher time frame premium raise, and you had the same thing on the lower time frame, be your five minute. On a five minute, it may not be as clear, but here on a 15 minute, look at the down close candles in comparison to the up close candles. Right, they are significantly larger in comparison to the up close candles. This one down close candle made up the retracement range for all of these up close candles. So that shows you that shorts are still heavily overwhelming longs. And you shouldn't be phased by this up move. Because what does your displacement show you? 
bearishness to the downside. And then that is where you get here with your final bearish displacement. That is why this concept, even though it's so simple, it should never be overlooked because it will differentiate whether your market reversals are high probability or low probability. Not only that, but it also supports the idea of your higher time frame or the market direction of any higher time frame in general. Here, you have your second top-down analysis example. Like always, your displacement will dictate the direction of your current time frame. So here, on the higher time frame being your daily again, where is your displacement? It's very obvious that displacement is bullish compared to sizes of the up-close candles in comparison to the down-close candles. So it's clear that we are, what we are looking for is a retracement into a discount array before continuation higher. With that in mind, let's mark out your discount arrays. You have this imbalance that price will come into or this bullish order block. Playing price out, what does it do? It tap into this bullish order block. This becomes your next draw on liquidity and from here, draw down onto a lower time frame. The same thing you've done on the higher time frame, you would hunt for your displacement on the lower time frame. And that's exactly what you get there. You have this market structure break, backed up with these large uplift candles leaving behind imbalances. Ideally, most of the candles should be large uplift candles, but here you had the Asian session, so you would have low volume here. But if you keep playing price up, you get another displacement, which confirms that bullish move. If you was wary of the initial displacement because you had the Asian session low volatility here. So that second displacement confirms your bullish up move. Look for your imbalances. And here you will drill down onto your execution time frame. For this one, let's use the 15 minute. Playing price out, you get heavy displacement higher. Taking out this high, giving you your market structure shift, backed up with the fact that you had displacement. So that confirms that this was a key level for price to react off of. This hourly imbalance over here. And from here, this is where you will look for your entries. If you watch my market maker videos, this was an old accumulation level, turn new distribution. You could have an entry off of here. Stop loss below this low. And then what would you look to target? You could look to target this overall draw on liquidity here. If you were swinging this position, if you wanted a quick trade, this could be your next draw. And eventually this draw over here. So let's play price out and see what it does. And then it hits your immediate draw on liquidity. Jumping onto the higher time frame. And then it hits your next draw on liquidity. So here, does a 2 hour trade. If you aim for this, that will be a 4.5 hour trade. And then if you go on into the higher time frame, price eventually hits your overall draw on liquidity. That would have taken out your initial entry. But here, because on the higher time frame, displacement was on your side, all you had to do was repeat the same process when price retraced back into this bullish order block or you could use the rejection block right and then you would drop down into a lower time frame and look for the same thing displacement to support price higher and validate your key levels that is in line with your higher time frame direction so here this is where you could look for your second entry and then you would target your overall draw on liquidity okay, so displacement not only differentiates between your high probability and low probability market reversals but it also increases the likelihood of your draw on liquidity being hit. Because if you have a buy side draw on liquidity, if you see bullish displacement, that will increase the probability of this buy side liquidity getting hit. Vice versa, if you was looking for a sell side liquidity. Here, if you had this sell side liquidity over here, and price broke through this low with displacement, when you see that displacement, you could anticipate for this sell side liquidity to get hit. So that is another thing you could use displacement for. Hence why you should never overlook this simple concept. Even though it's simple, it's extremely powerful. And that concludes this video on displacement. If you guys found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them below in the comments. And like always, take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.